Can I keep preaching in here? That's all I'm going to show you. Then we, now we're going to the scriptures. Amen. Just a little bit at a time. You can't handle everything at once. Amen. But don't you let the devil trick you in this hour. <laughs> you know, the devil's job is to make something, make you feel like there's something wrong with the truth. So that you won't have to hear it. A lot of people just don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear it. They don't have ears to hear it. But look at somebody and say, I'm listening. I'm listening. Amen. God has my attention. I, I, I was praying this morning. I told the Lord, I said, you have my attention because everything you've told me was foreshadowed. Like you, you saw it first. I may have done the video or whatever, but you, you did that. So I'm going to trust what you show me. Amen. I'm going to trust what you show me. Matthew 20, 10 and 29. Let's go to the scriptures. Are not two sparrows sold for a farthing, and one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father. So God is controlling everything. Not one bird is going to fall to the ground without God being in control of it. But the very hairs of your head are what? All numbered. The very hairs on your head are all numbered. So fear ye not, therefore. Look at somebody and say, fear ye not. Fear ye not, not, therefore. Ye are of more value than many sparrows. You're worth more than many one-cent birds, farthings. You're worth more than that. So fear, look at somebody and say, fear not. not. If the bird is not going to fall without God knowing about it, and he knows the very number of hairs on your head what are you afraid of amen Amen. what are you afraid of since the beginning of time god has been in control of what happens to his people on earth y'all believe that since the beginning of time why would god make a world that he couldn't control Somebody said, well, the world got out of order. Yeah, the world got out of order and God was still in control because what did he do? He erased it and started over again. You in control when you can do that. And he was so much in control that he made sure there was a family that hadn't merged their DNA with the Nephilim DNA. He made sure there was someone that could still call upon his name. And he took that family and created all of us. So since the beginning of time, God has been in control of what's happened to his people on earth. There are no coincidences occurring, but it's all what? A part of God's sovereign plan. No coincidence. I don't believe in coincidence. But it's all a part of God's sovereign plan. First Peter 1 and 20. Who verily was foreordained before the foundation of this world, but was manifest in these last times for you. Speaking of Jesus. So Jesus was foreordained when? Before. So God's plan was in action before the foundation of the world. Man, he planned it before there was anything to plan. Only God can do that. Each and every individual is a part of God's plan. Amen. Amen. Even the stupid people. The dummies that's going to hell. They are a part of God's plan. The gates of hell. He's a part of God's plan. Yeah, ain't nobody just out there doing whatever. Nah, bruh. You bringing something to life just by you being stupid some people are pure evil anybody know some pure evil folks that there's just no hope for like they're allergic to the truth yeah pure evil but they bring testing and trials to those that belong to God yeah so you just God oh Lord if I'm not praying that you kill them but if they happen to die 
Yibasha, I will believe that it was you that judged the unjust. Nope, God gonna let them live and he gonna let them keep bothering you because they're gonna bring testing and trials to you to make you stronger, get you on your knees. Amen. Your knees don't hit the floor if things stay good all the time. I know you think you supersonic save, you, you meta save. I, th I know, you think you just, I know, but let things stay good for too long. Watch how complacent you get, watch. You ain't been on your knees in a while, so that stupid person gotta come and get on your nerves and put you on your knees again. So God is using all of it, even the pure evil folks. Amen. It would be wonderful if this church was a perfect utopian church where everyone in here loved the Lord the same. Can't happen. Know why it can't happen? Because there's a door on the building. If there's a door on the building, crazy is going to get in here. And the 2021 crazy look just like it's not crazy. You don't know it's crazy until you get close to it. But it's going to happen. They're going to be here because they're going to have to put you on your knees. Amen. Something I'm going to say and something I'm going to preach is going to challenge you and you're going to think I'm crazy. And you're going to have to make a choice. Am I going to listen the, to the man of God that I believe God led me here? I believe he led me here. Am I going to listen to it? Am I going to receive it? Or I'm going to reject it and start saying he did lead me here and look spiritually schizophrenic because I don't know the voice of the Lord. So if I thought he let me in, and now I'm saying he didn't, then how do I know he didn't? If I was saying he let me in, then I leave and say he didn't. Oh, that was a mistake. Then how do I know I'm not making a mistake by leaving? <laughs> that made somebody's head hurt. They're like, okay, let's change the subject. <laughs> Psalms 139 and 16 Thine eyes did see my substance Yet being unperfect And in thy book All my members were written Which is continuous Which in continuous were fashioned When as yet there was none of them So before you saw me You saw me That's what he said Before you formed me You, formed, you knew me before you formed me You saw me before you saw me that's only God can do that. And if he did that, then that means he's not going to dump you. If he's working a plan in you, all you got to do is just hold on to his plan. Amen. Things are going to get rough, Elder. Things are going to get tough. But you look at somebody and say, hold on to his plan. I believe God made us and our plan at the same time. So as long as we're living, he's working the plan. Amen. 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 If the number of hairs on your head matters to God, then that can only mean that we are precious to him and we should not be afraid of anything. Amen. Amen. You believe you really love your wife. You really love your wife, don't you? How many hairs on the head? See, you don't love her that much. You don't love her that much. You do love her, but that's a, that's a level of love you can't have. <laughs> Some women are here, well, now I know how many hairs he got. <laughs> His hairs are numbered. <laughs> <laughs> but if the number of hairs on your head matters to God that can only mean that we are precious to him and we should not be afraid of anything look at somebody and say don't be afraid man if you matter that much to God what are you afraid of we cannot abandon faith in these uncertain times but we must continue to believe that we are important to the creator of all things. You know, the, the devil took this baby daddy kind of thing or this, you know, illegitimate thing 
and really made people feel like they weren't important, that their birth wasn't important. That's what it was for. Take the man out the home, all of these, uh, you know, children born out of wedlock, like whatever it is, they begin to feel that they're not important because that's the example of the creator creating us. That you feel when your father sees you as a baby, you feel that purpose. And I believe that the devil, this was, that was a part of his plan. There's a lot of people walking around feeling like they are not important to God. So they turn to the devil. Yeah. Because when they were born, they just didn't feel they were important to their father. Or they were neglected to the point to where they felt they weren't important to their father. And that hurt or hindered their feelings toward God. Does that make sense? Yeah. But I'm telling you now, I don't care how you was born. I don't care if you was born and sat in a batch of lizards. And the biggest lizard raised you. I don't care. <laughs> you better know <laughs> that you are important to the creator of all things. Amen. He brought you here to strengthen you with the truth. Because he cares about you. You know if he brought you here. Amen. And you know if you accidentally just fell in here. But those that you believe God brought you here, he brought you here so you can hear this end time truth so you won't be deceived by the rucus that's going on out there. Amen. Amen. You can walk around without fear. Just not afraid. No, oh, man, I'll dap you up, come in. Everybody just looking like, oh, wait a minute, man. Don't you know what's going on? Oh, yeah, I know what's going on. Do you know what's going on? Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace and what? Not evil. To give you a what? An accidental end? A what kind of end? Expected. So if there's an expected end from the Alpha and Omega, that means there's a plan. Matthew 10 and 32, whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my father, which is in heaven. Y'all, the day is coming where you're not going to be able to hide what you believe anymore. Amen. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my father, which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I what? Also deny. Before my father, which is in heaven. If you're scared to confess him, you're going to get denied. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father. And the daughter against her mother. And the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's foes or enemies shall be they of his own household. What is he talking about? He's talking about what's happening right now. Right now. Folks won't let you come over if you're not vac. They don't want to see you. If they find out you're not vac, they're going to call you and talk about you. And why you not doing it? And why haven't you done it? And what's wrong with you? You going to, oh, you listen to that old preacher down there. Oh, you old listening to that. And you, oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. That's what, that's what Jesus was talking about. He's talking about this time right here. Right here. Folks will argue you down and make you feel like something is wrong with you because you don't want to experiment with yourself. Amen. It's like, bro, this ain't Frankenstein. <laughs> we can deny God by not believing he is who he says in the word. You're denying him if you don't believe he is who he says in the word. When we doubt him and walk in fear, we are denying his love. Fear hath torment because fear is the opposite of love. Remember I said that back in part two? Fear is the opposite of love. How can a person live in fear and yet believe in God's power and control? 
You can't. They cannot. How can you live in fear and believe God is in control? How can you live in fear of dying and you believe God is in control? Man, you couldn't have done none of the miracles in the Old Testament. These guys faced death before God stepped in and intervened. You'd have been scared to get in the lion's den. You'd heard them lions growling. Oh, that's all right. Now, where do I bow now? Where, where? Where do I go to bow? Where's the bowing section? I've changed my mind. I have changed my mind. I, they loud. They loud down there. It sound like they, sound like they ain't ate in a while. They, you know, where, where can I go? Where, where can I go? Because you don't realize that they threw Daniel down there and Daniel just assumed they're going to rip me to pieces because they are lions. They are hungry and they're loud. So he's like, they're going to rip me to pieces, but it don't matter. It doesn't matter because what I've seen and what he's told me and what he's done for me is too important. I want to be with him anyway. So throw me down there and if it's time for me to be with him, I'm going to be with him. He's in control. If it's not time to be with him, he's going to shut the lion's mouth. But either way, I win. I'm going to be a testimony in life and I'm going to be a testimony in death. Either way. I win. Yeah, you believe in God. I'm buddies, folk. Somebody send me a video of a preacher talking. Oh, yeah, but see, to protect you guys, we're going to keep the doors closed. P protect who? Just say you're scared, man. Just say you're scared. Just say you never had any kind of power to begin with. Because if you got the power of the Holy Ghost, you're not afraid. Boy, they couldn't have put you in front of the fiery furnace. I mean, just the hair on your arm got sins, and you was ready to, okay, now where, where do I bow? Where, what, what, do we, what, what, what do me and the three need to do? You to turn. Yeah, you couldn't have handled that. The fiery furnace. We're going to put y'all in a furnace and heat it up ten times hotter. And the three Hebrew boys stood in front of that furnace, turned it up so hot that the people that was throwing them in burned up. It's like throw his head. Because we either going to be a testimony living or we going to be a testimony dying. But either way, we want to let you know, King, that we will not bow to your false God. Either way, Either way. You scared of dogs on your street. <laughs> you gonna handle them lions. They weren't just regular lions, they old testament lions. Chronicles of Narnia lions. It was some big old lines. You already scared and they ain't even really started yet. You, you scared now at invisible stuff. Just wait till the sword come to challenge you. Pull out the guillotine. Torture. You gonna stand for God? You won't even stand for him? They tell you you can go into church and you won't stand for it. First John 4 and 18. There is no fear in love, but perfect love does what? Cast out fear. So if you love God perfectly, there's no fear. Because fear hath what? Torment. He that feareth is not made what? Perfect in love. I'll never forget, boy, I went to Hampton University, and this is when this scripture just came. The realization of it came to me. I was getting ready to speak, and, and I was coming to do the Truth Behind Hip Hop part two, and they told me, they announced, uh, well, they told the guys that was bringing me to warn me and tell me that they had snipers in the audience because I was coming against, at the time, uh, the five percenters, and the five percenters had like a 
Virginia chapter that where they were mimicking the Black Panthers. <sighs> so they, <laughs> he said, hey, you know, so my brother-in-law was managing me at the time and he went with me and he was like, man, G, you know, you, this, this, this is getting a little dangerous. He's like, you know, what you want to do? Like, do you want to do it? And I was like, well, I don't want to get shot. <laughs> and as I began to talk to the Lord about it, I didn't even go into no deep prayer speaking. I don't, you know, God ain't impressed with that. I just said, Lord, did, is this what you called me to do? And the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, if I called you to do it, what you scared of? If this is the last time you did it, that just means you did it the times I needed you to do it. If I called you. He's like, so what you afraid of? And I said, I guess I'm not afraid. Yeah. And so I told my brother, I was like, dude, let, let's go. And I'll never forget walking on that stage. Oh, goodness. <laughs> you know, you start seeing, everybody start looking like, get your hand out of my pocket. <laughs> Everybody, all, every, all in the audience, that's all I saw was candidates, possible, potential. <laughs> so I'm just, I'm just looking, I'm scared of the audience the whole time. The Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, what are you afraid of? I said, I'm not afraid of anything. I preach the truth behind hip hop and let me tell you what happened. So while I was speaking, when I got to the end and started doing the altar call, everybody just started leaving. And that hurt my feelings. I thought they was leaving and they didn't like it. They was going back to their dorms collecting stuff and they brought all this stuff back. They literally threw away all the junk, all the paraphernalia, all the stuff that they had. They brought it back so it could be destroyed. And that's when I knew, I said, yep, yep. So, you know, you, you, you think you can destroy the body and stop the message, you can't. Because God is God, amen? There is no fear in love. Perfect love cast out fear because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not what? You don't love God if you're in fear. Because he's not who you saying he is to you if you're in fear. A person that is fearful will not stand against society or the new world order. They will fold like a lawn chair and give in like they're doing now. And when so-called believers, in quotes, give in, they must persecute those that didn't give in so they will not look weak or godless. Something is wrong with us. Yeah, they got to make something wrong with us. They got to make something wrong with you because they gave in. And if they don't make something wrong with you, then they look weak. So in order to not look weak, they have to betray you. Yeah. Yeah, they're not going to need, they're not going to have to have papers or a glowing arm or whatever to prove that you've been vaccinated. Folks going to tell on you. Your family is going to tell on you. Can I keep preaching? Yes, and they're going to tell on you because you're making them look bad, weak, or godless. Matthew 24 and 10. And then shall many be offended and shall what? Betray one another and what? And hate one another. This is the variance that Jesus spoke of. In this last hour, being strong in the Lord causes those that are weak to lash out to protect their own image. If you strong in the Lord, the weak in the Lord don't like you no more. So they got to try to tear you down. They accept the New World Order's version of truth and must fight against those that have true faith in order to feel they are doing the right thing. Mm -hmm, something is wrong with you all of a sudden. Jude 4. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men. We're seeing who's godly right now. The new world order is showing you who's godly. Ungodly men turning the grace of God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. 
Y'all still with me? Yes, Matthew 10 and 37. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. He that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me, he's not worthy of me. He that findeth his life shall lose it. And he that loses his life for my sake shall what? Find it. Yeah. So in this time, and what it's saying, it's not saying a comparison between our earthly love and agape love. No, it's not even talking about that. It's talking about do you love your father and mother more than the truth? Son or daughter, more than the truth? I love you, but I'm going to go with the truth. Amen. Amen? Because the truth is the Holy Ghost. The Bible said that's the spirit of truth. And it testifies of Jesus. So I'm going with that. Amen. You can go get the shot. You can go do whatever you want. I'm going with the truth. Well, what does that have to do with anything? Hey, look. I'm not messing with my own mental capacity. My mind is how I understand what the word says. So I'm not letting you put something in my mind that might make me no longer understand that. I'm not trusting you and you got something experimental and you don't even know the full outcome of what, it, what, what it's going to be once it's in there. So I need to be in my right mind. The Bible tells me to be sober minded. I need to be able to choose Christ know Christ, feel Christ when I need to. Yeah. Amen. So I'm not trusting godless folk that hate Christ. Trusting a man in a dress telling me to wear it, a mask. You just mad at the way you look. I ain't listening to that. That's crazy. Can I keep preaching? We must love God with our entire life. Even if it means going against father, mother, son, or daughter. Amen. Even if family is good to have, but when they try to make you give in to the New World Order's DNA altering experiments, you must hold fast to Jesus. Amen. Amen. I hear when people ask me, well, but I, I already did it, so now what do I do? <laughs> Just like they don't know what it's going to do to you. I don't know what you need to do, bro. And then they act like something wrong if you can't give them the answer. So what, you saying I'm doomed? <laughs> I didn't make it. I don't know what you are. I don't know what you will become. They don't know. It's never been done before. It's all an ex you know what what part of experiment don't you understand? Bro, I did not come 52 years to become a gerbil. Amen. You ain't putting me on a wheel and see how fast I can run. No, man. I'm taking care of myself. I put supp supplements in me. I'm in the gym three, four times a week. I ride my bike. I get the cardio I need. I eat the right foods. Every now and then I eat some junk, but everybody does that. Every now and then I need a slice of pie. Every, just every now and then. You just can't do it every day. I mean, in the Bible, they had celebrations. Hey, man, I believe the shoe bread tasted pretty good. Depending on who baked it. They had some old mothers in that baking that bread. What's wrong with that? That was on the altar. So every now and then, oh, they might have had a little... Well, they ain't had no butter because they couldn't do the milk. Goat. No, you can't make butter from goats. <laughs> Let's try to change the Bible so I can have, so I can have some Papa Do's bread and butter. 
try to find it in the Bible. Yeah, but I take care of myself. I don't just let myself go and just depend on what a doctor says. Oh, well, you take care of my health while I preach the gospel. You can't do that. That's irresponsible. You're supposed to take care of your temple. That's the temple of the Holy Ghost. Man, if you was cared for your temple, you wouldn't let them experiment on you. They've been experimenting on, experimenting on some of these folk their whole life. And they've been trusting them with drugs and side effects. Mark 13 and 12. Now the brother shall be... You know, there was a time when you could preach this and it was okay because this was how we felt. Now you can't say it. You don't see something wrong with that? They don't want you to hear what I'm saying. Wait a minute. So all this time, folks have been talking against the government, talking against everything. But this right here can't be talked against. Sound like some end time stuff. Yeah, sound like they have a very, very diabolical plan. If they don't want the truth out. Mark 13 and 12. Now the brother shall betray the brother to death. And the father, the son, and the children shall rise up against their parents and shall cause them to be put to death. Telling on each other. They didn't get it. Can I keep going? Christ warned us that the day would come when you would have to choose faith over family, faith over money, and faith over what? Fun. You got to choose faith over fun. You might not get to go on the trips you're going on. Would they really be this evil though? You acting like, man, you acting like people. Would they really be this evil? You don't know history, man. There's always been people who tried to rule the world, take over the world, and have destroyed parts of the world. Every few hundred years, somebody raises up and tries to do that. You think the world's better now than it was then? Are things better now than they were then? (laughs) Yeah, it's time to realize that the day of reckoning is here and we must love God more than all that we stand to lose. Amen. Amen. All that we stand to lose. What are you losing? What you going to lose? Do you know if you're in Christ, you have nothing to lose? Nothing. Nothing. House, car. We done done all that. We done had houses, cars, most of us, apartments. You got somewhere nice to stay. You got air conditioning. You got nice clothes. You got them on now. They're nice. I had a little money. We've done it all. What do you have to lose? Amen. Amen. Luke 9 and 61. And another also said, Lord, I will follow thee. But let me first go bid them farewell, which are at my home, at my house. And Jesus said unto him, no man, having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom. What in your life will make you look back and wish You hadn't made the decision you made. What makes you look back? What do you have that's that important? What are you trying to get? Who are you trying to impress? Whose opinion are you worried about? There is no such thing as losing when it comes to God. Because if we live for him, we will die in him. It's a win-win no matter how it ends for us. Living for the true God gives us peace and not fear. Dying in God gives us everlasting life with him. Look at somebody and say, hold fast. Philippians 1 and 21, for me to live is Christ and to die is what? Okay. Summary! Oh, that was good. 
Look at somebody and say, don't you be afraid. Look at somebody and say, don't you be afraid. Man, if I get, if I, man, if I ever get scared of telling the truth, I quit. You know how long I've been telling the truth, preaching like this? Really? Man, please. That's the, this is the only way I know how to preach, Elder. When I was growing up, this was the only way they did preach. I don't understand all this old. Oh, be the best you you can be. Look at somebody now and tell them that you're going to be the best you you can be. That's what God wants. God wants you to shut up. Man, yeah, I start getting sleepy just saying it. That's that sleep sermon. Ooh, pre preach like that when I'm tired. And you, I be snoring louder than you. They have to come put a cotton ball in my mouth or something. But man, I would be out, boring self. You might want to hear that now. 2021, I might want to hear you talk about faith and you all scared. What are you preaching? What is, what is your sermon like? Yeah, yeah, you don't need to go back in the church because what you going to say when you get in there? Y'all, God can do anything. What? Really? Kenny? What have we been doing? Why we can't come in there then if he can do anything? Well, see, but you got to use wisdom. Man, I don't like what you're talking about. Wisdom. I saw you at Home Depot the other day. Was you using wisdom when you was getting them two by fours? I saw you at Walmart. Was you using wisdom when you had a dress and a pack of weenies in the basket? You know, Walmart's the only place you can do that. <laughs> a pair of shoes and a water hose and some charcoal and some frozen dinners. All in the same <laughs> basket. You was in there shopping. She can't come to church. Your kids was at the club. They might have been at your church if you had opened, but the club was open. They was in there getting bad it. Getting locked. Just I me. Tying the club up, shuffling and scooting all up in the club. Yeah, because the church was closed. Club was packed. Club was packed. Liquor store, packed. During the deepest, darkest parts of the pandemic, the liquor store was packed. You'd have to go early. You'd have to make an appointment on an app just to get some MD. Is MD in the selection? How do you choose MD on an app? <laughs> strip club packed. Pandemic strippers, strippers with mask on stripping. Is that a part of the act? You gonna take the mask off too? Sanitizing the bowl and lights all us. What y'all doing in there? What you doing in there? But you can't come to church? <laughs> but you can't come to church. Can't come to church. Oh, but we gonna all gather for a protest against the white man. Cause somebody we don't know got shot. So we gonna gather. He got shot breaking into something. With the evidence in his pocket. And the plan he drew when he was on lockdown. The whole map of the place. But we gonna, we, we going to support that, that. That's essential. But the church, I'm going to protect y'all from y'all self and y'all don't in danger.
Did I skip the first one? Oh. It's up here acting all fool. <laughs> what are you afraid of? Are you afraid of losing your job? Look at somebody and say, God will provide. When you didn't have a job, how did you get one? Did God provide? Then what you afraid for? Oh, they making it mandatory. Yes, they are. I mean, what do I do? I don't know what you do. I just be, I'll just be jobless, trusting God. Feed me with a raven. I don't care. I trust God that much. I just believe he's going to take care of me. That's what I'm saying. You got up and testified. They love, they, they, they love my life. They love wake me up this morning. They love, blah, blah, blah. Then after you said the stuff that, you know, everybody know. Oh, yeah, y'all. And God bless me with a job. Hey! Da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. God bless you with a job. Now, they required it. Can God bless you with another one? Yeah. Maybe God can protect you on that one, too. It was nine ladies got together and said, you know what? We're not taking it. And this company's going to die without us. Guess what the company did? Changed their mind. Well, it ain't mandatory no more. <laughs> they just making it up as they go anyway. It's all about your foolishness. But you stand up sometimes. <laughs> Woo! YouTube going to be mad. Whoa! It's the last message. Golly. <laughs> Nobody think about YouTube either. Hey man, how you gonna counsel the preacher and you got porn on YouTube? Forget y'all. Are you afraid of losing your job? God will provide. Are you afraid of losing friends and family? God will give you like-minded people to stand with you. Hey Amen. That's why some of you came here. I need to be around some folks that's believing what I believe. But that isolation will mess you up. Isolation will mess you up. Boy, you ain't that strong. Nobody's strong enough. You aren't strong enough to survive isolation by yourself. You're trying to defy something that the scriptures taught about. Are you afraid of being persecuted, ridiculed, or singled out? Blessed are you, according to the word. And you should be used to that anyway if you're a real believer. If you're a real believer, you should be used to that. If you're not used to it, then what have you been believing? You to get along, Christian. They don't know you're a Christian until you say something. Until you pass your church and say, oh yeah, I go there. <laughs> On your way to the liquor store. <laughs> yeah, you should be used to that. Are you afraid of death? Then you love your life too much. And why would you want to? Anyway, let me keep going. People of God, it's time that we deny ourselves. Take up our cross and do what? Follow him. It's time that we take value out of this life and send it up to God. Our walk with Christ is the only valuable thing in our world today. And it's only valuable because of the value he has placed on us. He numbered the hairs of our heads, which means he cares about every intricate detail. Do you know that your whole DNA makeup is in your hair? Yes, sir. You know they can check your hair, test your hair, and find out all the stuff that's going wrong in your body? Yeah. Did you know that? You know why? That's why he said this, because your whole DNA makeup is in your hair. And that's why he said he has numbered your hairs, meaning he knows everything that's going on in your body. He numbered the hairs of our head, which means he cares about every intricate detail of our being, including our DNA and nervous system responses that commune with his presence. What you think is communion with his presence? Oh, but that's the spirit in me. No, 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 listen. It's all electricity. It's all energy. So if somebody manipulates that, don't you know that they can stop that? Your brain is electric. Your heart is electric. When they start messing with that, they're messing with your ability to commune with other realms. Don't you know that if you give up control of your thoughts and actions, you cannot choose God anymore? You choose him with your thoughts and actions. Yeah, 
if you confess with your what? Mouth. But then you have to what? You have to do what? Believe in your electric heart. <laughs> so it's not just about what you say. I know I'm preaching. Don't you know that if you give up control of your thoughts and actions, you cannot choose God anymore? Not only that, but you can be programmed to deny him and programmed to persecute those that are with him. The end time army that will fight against Christ is being created right now, just like in the days of Noah. We are familiar with certain side effects of prescri prescription drugs that can alter our thoughts and actions, right? So just imagine liquid nanotech that infuses with your nervous system, which controls your brain function. <laughs> it's time to stand now and be ready to give up all for the sake of Christ. After all, what would it profit a man to gain in this life and miss the next? Look at somebody and say, nothing is more important than the afterlife. Everyone stand to your feet. Powerful scripture here, man. Woo! And this is where we are right now, 2021. Matthew 10 and 28. And fear not them which kill the body. Look at somebody and say, don't be scared of them. Don't be scared of the folks that can only kill the body. He says, fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. But rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. This scripture used to scare me when I was young, boy, because he used to say that in the burning hell. And my dad used to show that, and man, I got saved every time he showed it. <laughs> and we don't even play with it. We joking online, me and my sister on the little thread or whatever, and I put a picture up, or she put a, one of us put a picture up of the burning hell, and, we, and after that, it's just, it's not funny no more. <laughs> that's not funny but yeah but that's where we are now y'all we just have to be ready to face like Jay song said face the stones you ready to face the stones you ready to face real persecution really are you really secure well get secure that's what we in here doing that's what these messages are doing yeah in part nine if you remember I talked about it at the beginning of part nine and God gave me a vision of myself doing what I'm doing right now and I talked about it, just preparing people for the things to come. And I asked the Lord, was it a truth behind hip hop? He told me, no, it was the tactical reprieve. And that's why I named it that. And I believe we are in that time right now. I believe I'm assigned to you. I believe you are assigned here. I believe we're supposed to be hearing what we're hearing. I believe God protects us to come here and hear it. I do. I believe Governor Abbott is only acting on the prayers and the fasting that we've done here. I believe that our faith here is helping us in this time. So if you need more faith and you want to be able to stand strong and make sure you're going to stand, stand strong, I'm going to pray with you. Just come on up. Just come on up. And we're going to stand strong now. Now. No more doubt. No fear. You ain't worried about it. Just don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. God doesn't want us worried. We got to believe God in this hour, man. We got to believe God. Can't just talk it. We have to believe it. They're not going to accept you just saying it. You're going to have to believe it. Man, but ooh, I'm the type of person, I'm just, I just have a logical brain. My brain is so, I just believe God made it that way, but I'm logical. So I just start thinking, man. What is it about Christ that y'all are afraid of? Like, why is everything about Jesus? Why are you just trying to stop everything about Jesus? You haven't seen them put Muslims out there on TV. You haven't seen them put any other belief system out there. But man, Jesus, they just, oh. Well, that's the one I want to be with. Amen. That's the one I want to be with. I want to be with the one that they all afraid of. Because that tells me that there's something to that one. There's something to Jesus that's got them all scared. So we're going to believe God in this hour for strength 
and faith and courage. All right? So everyone bow your head. Father God, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you for this message. God, we want to love you with our life. We want to love you with everything we have. We want to love you. We want everything that we have, what we do, what we say. We want it to all reflect you in this hour, God. So I pray right now that everyone under the sound of my voice, even in this building and beyond, Father God, that we would grab hold to faith. In time, faith. Faith, Father God, to stand. Faith like Daniel had. Faith like the three Hebrews had. Faith like Abraham had. Faith like Noah had. Faith like they had back in the Bible days. Father God, we are in the Bible days now. We're in Revelations now. And so God, help us to have the same faith. Help us to let go of the things that are heavy weights to us. Help us to let go of the things that are hindering our faith, hindering our belief, so we can stand in this last hour. Everyone just lift your hands. Father God, you are our provision. You're our money. You're our food. You're our shelter. You take care of us. And if you're concerned, if you know about sparrows before they fall, if you know about animals, if you know about every hair on our head, then we know you've got us. So right now we take our faith, our trust and confidence out of our jobs. We take it out of people. We take it out of the earth and we place it in you. We will trust in you for our provision. We will trust in you for our sustenance. We will trust in you for our bills, for our, our luxuries, for the, the things we own, the things we have. We'll trust it all. We'll trust you for them all, God. We trust you. And God, we don't, want it to, we don't want it to just be something we're saying. But God, we really trust you. And help us, God, to trust you even more. Help us to stop looking at earthly things. Stop being concerned with worldly things. Stop being concerned about things that don't even matter. And help us, Father God, to be concerned about you in this hour, that you are the most important thing in our lives. Let it be so. And help us to love you with our life. In this last and evil day, we pray. And God, we pray for family. We pray for those, Father God, that, Lord God, that have just gone the way of the new world order, that just don't believe the truth in this hour. God, we pray and even stand for pastors that are weak, that are afraid, that are scared. Father God, we pray for them, even in this hour, Father God, that they will get the confidence they need to stand up before it's too late. That they would stand for your truth before it's too late. That they would not walk in fear. But we cast out all fear. And God, we will stand in this hour. Come on, lift your hands even higher. We will stand. You see us. You know us. You know every one of us. You know us. Help us to stand. Help us to stand in this last hour. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, hug somebody and say, I'm going to stand. No matter how bad things get, I'm going to stand. Come on, look at somebody and say, I trust God. I didn't come this far to stop trusting. I didn't come this far to stop believing. I didn't come this far to give up. I didn't come this far to let the devil trick me. I didn't come this far to let someone talk me out of what I know to be true. But I'm going to stand in this last hour. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.